Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Locked On Cast for Thursday, November 4th. Coming to you a tad bit later in the day, because uh, last night was a little busy, but we're back. Going to cover Cavs Blazers and the Larry Nance Jr. homecoming. Going to talk about Lowry Marketing and joining Kevin Love on the sidelines in the league's health and safety protocols as it relates to COVID-19. And we're going to talk about Dylan Windler, who had a great game against Portland. And we're going to talk about what maybe him being looking okay and maybe the Cavs having some options to play more than, let's say, eight guys on a given night once everyone is healthy. That is all coming up today on Lockdown Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Thank you, by the way, for making Lockdown Cavs your first listen. Maybe not today, but you know, usually your first listen every day. Remember, we're free and available on all platforms. And today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked On are the ones that sent you. You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Evan, Cavs beat the Blazers. Before we get into that, uh, how are you? Um, I got my flu shot yesterday, so I'm a little achy, a little sore. Uh, I think once I get my COVID booster on Friday, I'm going to get some superpowers. So I'm pretty much looking forward to that. But, you know, man, all things considered, I uh, had a good time last night. Got to see you. Got to say hey for a little bit. Hung out with friend of the show. Not officially yet. He's coming on next week. But Mac Robinson hung out with him and Danny Cunningham in the press box. Uh, taunted you with the delicious food offerings the Cavs had for media members and hopefully you get to join us soon because of it but uh, I'm good all things considered you know can't complain how are you yeah I mean just to be clear I'm not uh I'm not banned just so people so we're clear no I Chris just, isn't banned I, he just hasn't shown up yet so well I've gone I've gone twice I with some, I, I with told, some, I with told some social activities yeah. yeah you went you went as a fan you didn't go as a member of the media I wouldn't say as a fan I would say as a observer I don't know if I like the word. I'm not a fan. God, I'm gonna. You're, you're Rob Lowe with the Super Bowl with the NFL hat on. I mean, I had I wore like a whining gold like thing with a hoodie, and um, that's fair. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, before we get into today's show, I want to shout out a listener named Devin, who I'm um, who I'm in. I was leaving the arena last night. Um, Evan and I recorded our lockdown. Now uh, I left the arena, and I was walking to go meet some friends at a at a bar nearby before uh, they they leave for. And one of them goes back to New York and I don't see him for a while. And uh, he said, it's it's Chris from Locked On. And he said, hi, walked up to his car. We talked. I had a mask on. Super nice guy. Uh, his wife's name, who I did not write down in the notes I have on my phone and the text seven about it. I apologize. I forgot your name, but you were also very nice. They were super cool. Shouts to Devin. Uh, and if you happen to see us in person, at least me, maybe Evan will like take you down because he was a wrestler in high school and he's just kind of aggro sometimes. Pause. But, uh, Pause. We're not talking about I've, this. I've run into several fans of the show at this point. He say, hey, man, I'm a really big fan of the podcast. I'm like, you know, man, thanks for listening. Really? Or And then he just fired man, just a generic thing. Then he fired yeah, then I fire him and chuck someone. I fire him and yeah. cradle someone and just slam him through like hell in the cell. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No. Like Chris someone, said, he, if you see yeah. us out and about, we're regulars in the community, unlike the chase down. We're actually based in Cleveland. So just say hey. Uh be cool about it. Like I sometimes get hesitant. If I seem a little off put at first, you say hey, it's just I worry, like, oh no, is this a Colin Sexton fan? He's about to like yell at me in public. But every interaction I've had, I've had several at this point. Um just drop me your ad on Twitter. I'll give you a follow. Like I had a guy who was um, bossing a table for my girlfriend and some friends and I, and he's like, Hey man. Cause I like handed him my car to pay for it. He's like, Hey, do you host locked on Cavs? I'm just like, Hey, yeah, man, what's up? He's like, yo, could you give me a follow on Twitter? I'm like, yeah, man, no problem. So I won't just, do that. Twitter is not Twitter. I, but I will be kind to you and talk to you. I would rather do I that. I mean, unlike, let's Twitter. say like you asked Carter Rodriguez to follow you. It's not like you're getting a verified follower at that point. So it's an added. Right, enough, enough shade. I love them. I'm no more bad vibes. Only, you know, oh, I get it. Cause his middle name shade. Carter has the coolest middle name. Full stop. But, would you um, prefer, wait, you prefer his middle name of shade to my middle name of wolf. Wow. Um, just saying, my middle name is Wolf. I don't know Justin's though. middle name. Mine's Patrick. So. Justin. Justin seems like a, like a he has like a dub middle name, like Cornelius or something. But anyway, Evan, let's talk about this game. Uh, Cavs win one thirteen to one or one hundred seven to one hundred four. 
Uh, mm-hmm. The Cavs in this one, 24 and 17 from Jared Allen. He also had four assists. Darius Garland, 19, including five of six from three, 10 assists against just three turnovers, 21 points and eight of 13 shooting for Colin Sexton. He also had two assists and five turnovers. J.D. Osmond, 12 points off the bench. Dylan Windler, 21 minutes, 13 points, three of three from three off the bench. Cavs went eight deep. Dean Wade started in the place of Lowry Marketing, who we'll talk about in the second segment. But have an MVP for this game for you is, is whom? This is tough because the Cavs are really playing by committee at this point, but I think my pick's going to be Dylan Windler just because okay. he hardly, obviously, I don't think he played a single minute other than garbage time, like meaningful minutes for the Cavs, but he checked in early into the first, or midway into the first, I should say. And I started just paying attention. I'm like, okay, what are we going to see from Dylan? Because JB said before the game, like, the Cavs are going to have to go deeper into the rotation. They're going to play guys who maybe haven't played as much. So I thought maybe either that's like Denzel Valentine or like Taco Fall got called up from the charge that night or what what the cat was we're going to do here. But Dylan checks in, so I was monitoring him closely. He looked a little rusty at first, and then he, for the entire game, finished the night with 13 points. He was perfect 3-3 three three from 3, had 3 assists, Um I will say that Cody Zeller, uh, the lesser Zeller, because there are fans chanting Tyler is better at the free throw line, ruined my first play of the night pick with the Rubio wraparound pass to Windler, and Windler got fouled on a layup attempt. But it's just, I don't know. Dylan Windler is a player I'm always going to be rooting for because I think it just sucks to see, like, when he's playing like this, you're like, okay, this is the kind of player I think the Cavs kind of expected coming out of Belmont, but it's unfortunate because injuries have kind of deprived us of seeing it to this point. And I just hope he can stay healthy. So for him to have nights like this, he definitely deserves a shout out. Yeah, uh, I think that's for mine's just going to be Jared Allen. Um, we'll lead into oh, yeah. it with the the play of the night pick that I have. But he was just really good. I think he's the best player on the floor. It was an off night for Evan Mobley. But Allen sustained a pretty high level play for 40 minutes on a night where they really needed it. And he was really good. I also just I think shooting a shouting at Darius Garland. Uh, he was really, really good. And him hitting threes like that is a big deal. And he hit some big just pull up threes. That were like, you're like, oh, make sure you raise your eyebrows a little bit. And he was very pinpoint speaking moving of, the ball. So, but Evan, let's go to play of the night. That's yeah. Speaking of so, my play of the night pick is the Darius Garland step back three to end the third quarter. Um, I tweeted it while watching the game, but if, and you said like you're seeing him shoot the ball a lot more, shooting it with confidence. So the Cavs need more of that Darius Garland on a night to night basis. I appreciate the fact that he tries to keep everybody involved like Ricky Rubio does. Um, the media tried to bait. JB and is saying Ruby is playing recklessly at times and are they worried Darius is trying to emulate all of his habits and who, okay who like, but you say the media who's who in the media is trying to bait JB into to calling Ricky reckless Schmish or but um JB says I like my players to be careful with the ball I think any coach would say that like it's a pretty dry answer but no that was my play of the night because I'm just like ooh that had a little spice to it like Darius, I was watching him prior to the game. He was hitting threes. Shout outs to Leah Nemeth of Fear the Sword. She tweeted at me saying, like, I think he's going to have a big night tonight. And maybe Leah's a savant. Maybe she sees some things that we don't. Um, he did have a big night tonight. And I think he should be an honorary MVP mention as well for us. Just like, you know, it's like the third option. If you really said get it. picked. Yeah, I yeah. know. But I agree with you. But that step back through is pretty big. Like, I enjoyed it a lot. What well, I think everyone knows your play of the pick. It would have been my other pick, but you took it first. So Look, what's end of the pick? game? End of the game. Jared Allen switches on to Damian Lillard. This is a situation where, like, you just imagine, like, Isaac Okor on the floor, like, hounding Dame. And, and so what the Cavs did was, okay, we're going to switch this. Jared is going to have to to deal with this, and we know they're probably going to go at him to force the switch. They did it. Jared stuck with him, forced a really tough shot. Dame missed, and it was just really good, really good one-on-one switching defense from Jared Allen to 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 really ice the game for Cleveland at the end there against Dame. And if you know Dame makes that shot, it's overtime. And he defended it as well as you can expect a big three shots to front of the program as well. Jimmy Longo for taking an amazing photo of that moment mm-hmm. that you can go find on his, on his Twitter at Jimmy Longo. But Evan, stat of the night for me. Uh, actually, you go first because I need to. I want to make sure I get my wording right before I say this. So you go first. Okay, I'm going to pull up my final numbers here. The fact that the Cavs shot 16 less shots and still beat a very good Portland team. Like, the Cavs just played very well, very soundly offensively, especially considering they were without Larry Markin and they were without Isaac Okor, they are without Kevin Love, three key pieces in their rotation, and they had to lean heavily on Ricky Rubio for 31 minutes. I mean, let's be frank, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen almost played the entire game. Ricky Rubio played almost 32 minutes for this game. Like, he, they leaned heavily on those key six players, and then, like, Dylan Wendell played 20 minutes as Jetty played 17 like this was a total team effort 
And this is a very talented team in Portland offensively. And it's just kind of impressive to say like the Cavs hung with the Blazers. Like, yeah, they're hitting some shots down the stretch to kind of pull themselves back in it. But the Cavs never really looked on. They looked kind of looked unfazed at times. They didn't seem like too, too concerned. And just the fact that they did it on 16 less shots is just pretty impressive to me. What's your stat of the night is you. I, did I give you enough time to find it? Yeah, you did. I, I pulled it up. Colin Sexton, for the first time in his career, had 20 plus points on 13 or fewer shots. That is the fewest number of shots he's taken and scored 20 or more points in a game. Wow, it's weird. Like the people who are obsessing about him touching the ball less need to stop wringing their hands so much. It's just trying to figure out the offensive flow of a new offensive identity because the Cavs are playing a lot faster than they have and a lot more modern than they have in recent years. But what yeah, do I also, know? him getting more efficient, him being more efficient mm-hmm. is good for the team and it helps success. It helps everything flow better. He was pretty good last night. Um, all right, Evan, we're going to get everyone involved too is also encouraged. Had a really nice uh, skip pass to Darius in the corner driving yep. out of the lane, which I was like, oh, nice, nice pass from Colin. Evan, anyway, we're going to take it a break. Rocked, man. And yeah. this episode of Locked on Cavs, speaking of Rocked, is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the car parts you need. Winder often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto's prices are a below and are for every customer, and they've been serving, serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. They have everything you need from brake parks, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. So go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution for your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on, and they're happy to hear about this box. They know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably below prices, all the parts you ever need. Check them out today at rockauto.com. Also, got to say about our friends at Bet Online. Evan, Bet Online is back and better than ever this season. They have a new web interface for the start of the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. They remain the number one spot for all of the basketball and fantasy football action of the season. Head to the new updated mobile or mobile or desktop site today to sign up and receive your 50% welcome bonus on that first deposit just use the promo code locked on to receive that bonus and remember from basketball to football to baseball to the to nhl to boxing to the ufc right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait and take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and it's bet online where the game starts okay evan uh larry marketing joins kevin love in the health and safety protocols uh, we, I think the expectation is going to be out at least Friday. I think it's very likely he's going to be out on Saturday as, or Sunday against the Knicks as well, just considering what this process looks like. We have, there's a lot kind of TBD on how it's going to play and everything, but obviously he's out. Kevin Love's out. Just, did you, I, I don't want to, the semantics, the epidemiology, the, uh, the, the doctor science of it all of it is like not worth us getting into. Cause there's just a lot of speculation that is unfair to Lowry and everything, but do you have just did you have like a reaction to to this a second calf being put in the health and safety protocols? Uh, it's unfortunate because the rigors that players have to go through in order to get back on the floor is it's pretty intense and rightfully so. I mean, the Cavs are 100 percent vaccinated, but you can't say that the same for other teams and you want to risk other people getting sick or hurt. Um, but it's unfortunate for this Cavs team because they were riding the highs of a pretty good West Coast road trip. Kobe Altman took a sweet victory lap in the form of a letter and um just kind of soured the mood a little bit i uh, forgot about the letter what a dumb thing what it just what what a silly thing what a silly I thing gonna, i thought it was gonna be like a recurring series and this is from the desk of kobe altman i'm like oh i would yeah smart. i mean if you i i would like that, kobe's like, like diary and yeah. i would give me kobe's like journal entries for every game but that not every fun. game I, but like I, maybe you know the couple weeks then i'll like, lean it lean it in lean, his, lean like, into the bit just lean into the bit kobe let's go just let's hey, man. Let's, let's, be, let's do it Berea's is burning in cleveland clinic courts as a beacon of hope right now look here, here's the, the thing about scene. sports here's the thing about sports give it them give any team any organization for the most part enough time they're going to do something crazy and stupid and things are going to go off the rails the Cavs just happen to like somehow be a pretty like maybe the most competent team in cleveland right now which is very bizarre not that that's like actually like big picture true, but like in the moment, the least dramatic. I, I, I was silent for emphasis, but thank you. Um, it's just unfortunate because I think this Cavs team is kind of finding their groove a little bit. 
especially with the unconventional three big starting lineup with Lari, Evan, and Jarrett starting together. I think they're kind of still figuring things out. Like, it's tough. You're playing three traditional big men who more so probably can play power forward and center, and then you're asking them to play fluidly between those three spots at all times. So, like, that's tough, and you're trying to figure that out on the fly. I think the lack of Isaac Okora already hurts them. I think the lack of Kevin Love already hurts them in terms of spacing. So losing Lowry was a blow. Um, this West Coast road trip was the first Cavs tested adversity, but I think this is just going to be the next one because, like, Toronto is going to be a tough game on Friday. Like, I'm anticipating it. I hope Scotty Barnes is back. I doubt he will be. But, like, Barnes versus Mobley will be fun. But Toronto under Nick nurse. Once again, surprise, surprise is playing really well and they're going into a hostile environment like Toronto as well too. So it's going to be an interesting test for the Cavs and we'll see what happens, but I agree. I don't think he'll be available for Friday against Toronto. I don't think he'll be available Sunday against New York, maybe Wednesday when they're home against Washington is the earliest we'd see maybe Kevin and Lowry both, but who knows at this point, it's just unfortunate. That's just, that's all I really thought. I was like, man, that kind of sucks. That's just, yeah. like, that's a bummer. Yeah, and I think what the Cavs are, are having here with what Chris Middleton, um, who has coronavirus and, and some of the other issues that have popped up around the league, this is just going to continue to be a thing, just like it is an issue with society and just like it is an issue with the general public. And yes, the, the, the percentage of NBA players who are vaccinated versus those who are not is much higher than the, you know the general populace. The Cavs, as far as we understand it, have every player vaccinated. This is just going to be part of the thing. And when a guy, it, it it's right now, even if, you know, it, because they're in, you know, in theory vaccinated, they're not going to have the potential severe harm um, as a result of that. They still are going to have to miss some time. There could still be some uh, after effects from it. And it's just something you're, I think until this sort of dies down fully or, or changes in a different way or whatever, this is just the reality I think teams are facing. It's, I, I you know, we don't really know sort of what, um, what the new sort of status. I think one of the things that would be sort of interesting to maybe ask JB at like a practice and ask some of the players is like, Okay, now that you, you know, have these things are a little different than the the sprint pandemic year. We just wanted to make it through when things were very locked down and and like you know, there's a lot of reporting done at the national level um, about how guys were. It, it was hard for guys. I think the thing to think about here is okay. Is there a point where there are certain teams that are still going to keep things very locked down? Are the guys gonna are you know are guys going back out to dinner in different cities? Like there there are th- not that they shouldn't. I'm not saying they shouldn't. I've eaten out. Like I think you've eaten. Like it. People are doing stuff. But I'm saying in terms of like how this has sort of changed from last year, because of the vaccine and the benefits of that, and then just sort of the different rules the league has in place. I think it'd be interesting to know sort of how teams are approaching that because I, I'm sure there are some coaches that are just like, look, I understand things are more back to normal. Maybe like you're not going to go like full go, but maybe we can like still pretty try to limit exposure as much as possible so we can get, you know, not have to miss yeah. a key guy for a bunch of games. You know I mean? Like the Bucks obviously in the long, like it's better to have it happen now than it would happen later. But like, it's a bummer for them that Chris Middleton is missing time because he has yeah. COVID-19. Like they're defending their yeah. title and you know, the Kyrie thing is its own other separate thing as well. So it's, I, I think that to me is just sort of like the, the intrigue for lack of a better way of saying it, just because I think that question of how, each NBA team handles it does have some effect on the season. It's not the most fun thing to talk about. It's less fun than talking about like Dylan Windler shooting well and, and Jared on dunking and Evan Mobley playing well and all that stuff. But like, it's just part of, I think covering and discussing what is going on here. I think it's this way with the Browns. I think it is this way with uh baseball teams. I think that any team in sports right now, I mean, like there, there's been stuff in soccer in Europe where like guys are flying, like had to like, court, like there were players who like, because of the the rules for like, because the, the the season's different, and there's like European, there's a qualifier for the World Cup in season. They had guys like flying from like England all the way down to uh, like Argentina, and they were like had to like fly back and then quarantine either like in London in like a hotel, or they had to like they could go to like another country in Europe that was like allowing people from that country and quarantine and train there and then go back to England. Like there's all these hoops you're jumping through, and it's this isn't as extreme as that, but it's just one of those things I think we got to keep an eye on as the season goes yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely agree. I, I when you said Bucks, I thought you were gonna say Tampa Bay, like the Buccaneers. Like I know they're the only professional team that's like we're locking down the entire season, like no extracurriculars, no fun. Like we're on the road, we stay in our hotel the entire time because they're a, I think Tom Brady's a maniac, and I think Bruce Arians. Yeah, really I think Bruce Arians in particular that. was the one who like led that at least publicly you know, was like Bruce hey, we're, we're doing that this. charge, but I feel like that's a Tom Brady initiative. <laughs> yeah, it's like like you know, I wonder if it's it's, it's an accountability yeah. thing too. Like if you're a championship caliber squad, 
I think that's an internal discussion a lot of teams have to have or like players and coaches for the players and coaches for the coaches and players for the coaches hold each other accountable, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated or not. And you don't lie about or not lie about it, but try to apply for homeopathic remedies like Aaron Rodgers and stuff. Well, like, well, and I think that is like, I, let's not go down that can of worms because yeah, I think like that, that's a that, lot to unpack. Yeah. That is the lockdown Packers shots to Peter Bukowski. Go check out that. If you want the, the scoop on Aaron Rodgers, he's uh, probably Peter's great. He was locked on today. Really good dude. But yeah, I think this is just like the reality of of being in like sports right now. I think like yeah. it is like it's an part of your thing. it's part of it's yeah, it's part of your you can team have fun, maintenance. but you have to be like, yo, man, we're trying to win here. We're not and yeah, granted, like the NFL season is a lot different. Like your week is fully regimented. Like, yes, it's the Sunday, the Monday and the Tuesday after games, you're usually off to rest and recover. Then Wednesday through Friday is practice, walkthroughs, and things like that in preparation for the game on Sunday. Saturday is usually for travel, and then Sunday or Monday or Thursday, depending on when you play. Like it's a lot different. It's on a week to week basis. And yes, basketball is stretched out a lot further. It's an 82 game season. Teams don't practice as much. There's a lot of travel in between. But I think there is a lot of accountability factors because of basketball. There's a lot of temptations to kind of fuck around and enjoy the nightlife whether you're like in miami or los angeles or anywhere really like new york if it's somewhere fun like it's really easy to give into temptation and kind of forget that like hey there's a reason why i'm in new york tonight versus like football where it's like scheduled for the entire week on a week-to-week basis i'm just saying this off my personal experience of playing football where like your entire week is planned out and then as soon as the season's over they're like yeah do whatever you want the other thing I think just at long term and on this note is like I'll be curious to think what the vibe is like for um for the for the All Star game because normally that is like guys will just show up they'll hang out there for a couple of days even if they're not playing they just want to watch stuff they want to hang out mm-hmm. with teammates for a day there's a bunch of events that sneaker companies and different league partners will will put on and, and whatever the host city is that is yeah. obviously as we know Cleveland this year. Like I'll be curious to see just like if that is at all of a different experience for like if if t- if teams are like you know we not we we'd kind of like you not to like go and like party for a couple of days and like maybe guys are gonna want to go somewhere warm anyway instead of wonderful Cleveland Ohio in February and I say that with no derision I God bless Cleveland I can't wait for the All Star game but um top it's just golf gonna be one of those things so busy <laughs> the top golf is yeah. happening top it's golf gonna have, yeah. J.R. Smith is gonna clean house at the top golf and independence yeah just everyone's hanging out at the independence like and hit, eating, like just more rage shots crushing crushing, crushing some like red robin after just like absolute king some red robin winking lizard, top, man. there's a winking lizard i'm just yeah but i'm just I, I was trying to think of like the most random restaurant that is over oh, there that is like know. yeah oh yeah they're yeah or like they'll just be like you know what we're just gonna get like some chipotle you or know we're denny's just gonna... across the street oh there is a de- yeah there is a denny's over there oh my god I, anyway I, I i my dad works over by rockside so i spent a lot of time there as a kid so i just know a lot of what the local haunts are and local yeah. i mean chains yeah the, ch- the, the ch- there's like the ch- well there is like a very nice steakhouse over there just the you know what else is really nice on rockside chris the McDonald's. The McDonald's there. I call it the McMansion. And speaking of McDonald's, this episode of Locked on Calves is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has been always more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can come to reconnect. It's a place where classmates can meet up for a study group, knowing they'll have dependable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of French fries and McFlurries. Win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors, and the home team or the away team can come to recharge. It's the place you always look forward to stopping out on a long road trip to rest your legs and refuel. McDonald's is great after a Little League game, and it's great at stopping by after a big sporting event. When I didn't live downtown and I'd be driving back home, I would always swing by McDonald's at their open and grab myself a double cheeseburger and a chicken McNugget and a large Coke and just have myself a nice little snack after Cavs games, but that's just me. So if you want to be like me or like your local sports team or those classmates relying on Wi-Fi, head to your local McDonald's to refill and reconnect. Did somebody say a locked on Cavs watch party? Ba, 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 ba. I'm loving it. Gotta include the snap at the end. I tried to read that ad read. Like, we're back, by the way. I tried to read that ad read like um like a Patreon ad or something, and I was hoping it'd be like a, like a soft or like a Folgers coffee ad. So there's like a soft guitar rift in the back. But Chris Dylan Windler looked really good as you write down the timestamps. But That's right, sticky notes, sticky notes, baby. But Dylan Windler looked pretty good. Um. I know it's really easy to bake or takes based off one game, and I bet you people are wondering if we think like he should he be a steady part of the rotation going forward. Um, I need to see more of it. I think this marketing absence and the lack of Kevin Love is a 
and Isaac Okoro as well. Okoro could be back too. He could be evalu- being evaluated before they head on the road to Toronto. But even then, um, what the hell do the Cavs have to lose? They can evaluate it. Dylan Windler's kind of NBA or back in shape and ready to play. This game against Toronto is a good test. This game against New York's a good test. If Kevin and Lowry are available against Washington next week, that's also a good test. Like that's a solid four ish, almost five game sample. If they really want to lean into it to see like, okay, this is what we have with Dylan Windler. This is what we don't have. Um, he had a really good game. He was my MVP pick against Portland. Um, he could have a stinker against Toronto. And I think the luxury of, him having a stinker at least is JB can pull the hook. He played more minutes than Jetty Osmond against Portland. And with Jetty's been pretty consistent, which is still crazy for me to say, but he's been pretty consistent this season so far. You just give more of less of Dylan minutes to Dylan and more minutes to Jetty at that point. I'm, I'm intrigued to see where this experiment goes. That's just kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. I, I look at it from a little bit of a different perspective. And then I, I think like, there's not really like a case to me that you should be sticking with like a 10 man ro- or an eight man rotation going. Oh forward. no, I absolutely like, agree. The yeah. Cavs should go nine or 10 deep. So last night, eight guys, uh, Windler played 21, only Dean Wade, Dean Wade played 23. Everyone else was and Jetty played 17, but everyone else played 30 or above Evan Mobley and Jared Allen in particular, each played 40 minutes. I know Evan's young. I know Jared has a high motor, all that stuff. I think if you're playing an 82 game season and you're playing like guys who are really key to you, especially Evan, as he's getting used to the 82 game grind, um, all that stuff, intricate, and they're just coming off a long road trip. Like he looks like not that he's like cooked or anything. Like he's he's going to get some rest in and figure that out. But like I think 40 minutes is like really pushing it. And I understand you have injuries right now, but like I think you got to coach around that a little bit. I I would be I think going for when everyone is healthy. I think the rotation like. If, I, if, if it was me, Garland, Sexton, Markinen, Love, Wade, Mo, or excuse me, let's let's go from the top. Sexton, Garland, Okoro, uh, Mobley, Allen, Love, Markinen, Rubio, Windler, and I think I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting Je- awesome. and Jenny. And play those ten. Play those ten. You get a bunch of wings. You don't have to lean quite as much on the the three big lineups. That the data, you know, the film is fun. There's some stuff that has worked about it. The data is not like convinced that those are good so far. We'll check on that after the the eleventh game over the weekend and stuff. But like this is the this is a Cavs team that like is dealing with some stuff right now. It's clear that like he's like okay, like I didn't like Lamar over the weekend. Like I I he went with Dylan last night. Dylan played a really good game was effective shooting was, was defending, was moving the ball, like was, was playing well. I would just like to see them go 10 guys, not try to like burden guys with so many minutes. So over the top, like look, Darius Garland, like needs to be playing in the 30 minutes, but if you're playing an 82 game season and you're trying to maintain this team and get them kind of consistent throughout the year and also find out about stuff, I think you got to play a little more. I think you got to stretch this out a little bit. Like, and plus, like, Windler provides stuff that you need. Isaac Okoro provides stuff that you need. Like, all of the guys, the, the two guys that um, wings that haven't played or haven't played provide stuff. Kevin Love provides something. Marketing provides something. You have to mix and match. You got to figure it out what act, what combos actually work. And and some of it might be night to night throwing things, things at the wall and seeing what works and what doesn't. I think you just kind of need to be in a spot where you go to actually 10 guys. And I think I don't think there's, like, a reason that when everyone is healthy – that you shouldn't be playing. Like if they stick with eight guys, then I think that's a little bit tight. Yeah, I, I agree. And another thing that is really interesting with like going 10 deep and more so giving Dylan minutes is last night. I took note of the fact that the Cavs are playing Garland, Rubio, Osmond, Windler at the four, and then either Mobley or Allen at the five. Like I, I think the Cavs going small is encouraging because I know JB is hell bent and determined to make this big lineup work, which like you and I agree. I don't think it's sustainable long term, but I think it's a fun offensive wrinkle. I think once teams more have more tape on it, they'll know how to defend it. Because like Paul George the other night said, uh, uh, we didn't know what they were doing because it's like just something I've never seen before. And Paul George kind of struggled against it because they're throwing bodies at him every single play. But I think the Cavs going small is a new offensive wrinkle. I think they should explore more. Um, I think having two point guards on the floor and having shooters like Osmond and Windler, like knock on wood, that that's sustainable is a really good thing because it provides. And then Garland's a shooter as well. So then you have Rubio who's inconsistent. And then you have Allen who can literally feast in the interior. And you saw a lot of that at times when they ran that lineup is 
Portland was respecting Windler's three point gravity. They're putting Robert Covington on him on possessions. They're putting Norm Powell on Jetty Osmond on possessions. They had guards defending Rubio and Garland, especially Garland because he has gravity too. And because of that, like Tyler or Cody, sorry, excuse me, Cody Zeller's life was being made hell. And they were just throwing it into Allen every single play. And Allen would just either post him up and just have a fancy footwork move on him and just dunk it or just lay it in perfectly every time. Like I think that is a line that the Cavs could explore a little bit more. And it's something I definitely encourage them to do. And I think having that versatility and fluidity by going 10 deep just makes this Cavs team a lot more harder to prepare for. Yeah. And I I just think, too, like, you're, again, emphasis. I think you're going to see, you need to see mixing and matching. I think you're going to need to see stuff that is thrown together and and trying different stuff. And the stuff might not be consistent night to night. That's the reality of it. And, like, you know, if if a guy gets injured, if they give someone a night off, whatever. I think that is just sort of where we're headed. And, but I, I think, like, Windler just, cl- like, Windler has some issues. He has some weaknesses. There, like, he this is one game is not indicative that he is, like, finally found his footing in the league. But he provides a useful yep. skill. Uh, he provides shooting that you need. And I think you gotta just think I think you just need to try it. And I don't think you're worse off if you go, hey, we're gonna we're gonna get through a couple games of this. And if he plays really bad, then maybe you reconsider and you go back to not eight or nine guys and you try that again. But I I think I would be more expansive and kind of you have I think this Cavs team is just in a in a spot where like they should be tinkering. It's not gonna be like the it's different than like the Bucks last year, let's say, where that they uh, were you know like they would try switching throughout the year and they were trying different stuff because they knew what didn't work in the in the playoffs for them and they needed to develop those skills uh, for the playoffs. Like what the Cavs will be doing here is saying we're going to find out who is actually kind of worth their, their salt, who is worth kind of being interested in as the season goes on and beyond this season. That's what this year is about. You can make a really nice run, make a play and run. The team is better than expected. They're five and four at a time when we didn't know how many games they were going to win this early. Like they. Like they, you know, still it's tough stretch coming up against the Wizards, the Knicks, and the Raptors. But like this is te- better than we thought. I think so far. I think tink. I think continuing to tinker on the edges is the way you continue to figure out what is actually gonna, what actually makes this team work, and what is gonna hold up over the course of of an eighty game season. That again, we have a ton of time left here. You you have a lot of basketball still to play. It's gonna be about figuring that all out. All right, we're gonna be back uh, on Thursday night. We're gonna do a live TBD time, maybe a little after eight o'clock. But join Evan and I then for a live episode of Lockdown Cavs. Thanks to our sponsors, Rock Auto, Ben Online, and McDonald's for sponsoring the show. And if you made Lockdown Cavs your first listen today, maybe you should go make your second listen, Lockdown Fantasy Basketball. Josh Lloyd hosts the number one daily fantasy basketball show on the planet that is free and available on all platforms. And remember, we'll be back doing a live, taking your questions, previewing the weekend slate that includes Toronto and New York as we get deeper and deeper into this Cavs season. Until next time, I'm Chris. He is Evan. We'll talk to you soon.